Hey everybody, I'm Random Bystander here, and I'm a random bystander who's here to remind you that while the giving season is over, I was checking under my tree, and guess what I found? Oh, what's this? What's this? Could it be? That's right. A $10 eShop gift card. That's right, we're doing this again. It's that time of year again, and no, I'm not talking about Christmas. The holidays happened when while Santa got you what you wanted under the tree, a lot of people didn't know what to get you. But they knew you liked Nintendo, and they tried their best. Yep, that's right. We're gonna be taking a look at more cheap eShop games. Around 12, I think. I lost count at this point. But we're gonna take a look at them today and see if they are worth the money. We actually made a video similar to this a while ago. If you wanna check that out, check the description below. That one had Clock Simulator. And other games too. Frederick, Resurrection of Music, 59 cents. A game about the classic composer, Frederick Chopin, coming back from the dead, try and challenge musicians to a piano rhythm game? I've heard that story before. You play as Frederick and use buttons to press keys on the piano, and you must match them to the notes on the screen. It's a cool concept, but if you want to play this game, it's best to play it in portable mode. The game with buttons makes it a lot harder. There's also these animated cutscenes in between each level, but they go on way too long at points, and the animation quality itself makes Shaq Fu look like Disney in comparison. The voice acting is all over the place too, ranging from decent to... this. So? Do you agree? No way. No. Enough. Cut! We're going with that take. It's perfect. As a rhythm game, it does work well, or at least in portable mode it does, and I do admire a lot of the small touches, such as the notes sounding weird if you mess up. But at the same time, there's a lot of problems I can't overlook. I had to put it down personally, but if you like rhythm games and Chopin, it might be worth a buy. Maybe. On to the next game. Oh wait, this game is bugged. See? Millie, 49 cents. Aw, oh, this game is already adorable. You play as a centipede named Millie, who dreams of becoming a pilot, and so she journeys off in order to find- <laughs> Oh jeez, Millie looks terrifying. As Millie, your goal is to eat enough pellets to open up the exit and escape to the next level. But the more pellets you eat, the more you grow as a centipede. If you collide with yourself, you are forced to rewind and find another way until game over. The game is surprisingly addicting as it is simple enough, but throws in new elements, challenges, and power-ups to keep the player engaged. These power-ups include the timer, which rewinds time, the hammer, which breaks open pathways, and the scissors, which makes your body shorter. Overall, an adorable, simple, yet fun game to play. More than worth the money. Aw, oh, that bug isn't so bad after all. In fact, I want to give it a great big hug. Hug. Hmm. I Hugu, 39 cents. Have you wanted to play a game about hugging people? Then I Hugu is the game for you. Your goal is to hug everyone you cross paths with in one day. You hug all these pixelated colorful characters, but you can only hug them once per day. Because God forbid you give someone multiple amounts of affection. The game is simple, yet colorful. I say it overdoes it a bit with the pixel art as it almost looks too colorful, but the game itself is entertaining enough to play. Plus, you can customize your character as well into hilarious combinations. Although some of them are a bit strange. You turn me into a llama! That said, that's all the game really has to offer. Just pixelated hugging. While it may not be a large open world, it's still a decent game if you want to kill a bit of time. Like if you're waiting in the waiting room of a doctor's office or something. Not bad. Alright, before we get to our next game, I gotta feed my dog Rory. Wait a minute. What do dogs eat again? Pet care. 14 cents. I click all the buttons I can and nothing works. Did I get ripped off? Well, no, but also yes. Turns out this is a portable only title. It doesn't even work when you dock the switch. It's a painfully simple game made for babies. You see the animal, see what food it should eat, play the game for a few rounds, then you win. It's boring, way too simple, it's for toddlers. And it's not even a good game for toddlers. My nephews wouldn't even give it a second glance. At least with Frederick, they made it so you could play it in dock mode if you wanted to. With this game, they didn't even try. They just slapped it on and then bam, it's good enough. Not even worth the 14 cents. I never thought I'd say this, but just spend a little bit more and get Clock Simulator. It's more than worth it compared to this. 14 cents, it seems like these games are getting cheaper and cheaper. I mean, how low can they get? Mecco Tales. <laughs> Four cents? 
Uh-oh. So what is this game that is worth less than a nickel? It's a shoot 'em up game where you have to fight other robots and go through the dungeon. As for the story of this game, I have no clue. They don't really explain it properly. I guess an evil person wants to take over the world, but a robot stops him and you have to stop even more evil robots. The plot feels like it was written by a procrastinating fifth grader who waited until the bus ride to school to finish their assignment. The cartoony styles of the robots can look interesting, but the more I look at them, the more cheap and kind of lazy they seem. But the biggest sin this game has is the lack of checkpoints. It's very easy to die, and no matter how far I got, there was not a checkpoint anywhere in sight, and I was always brought back to the beginning of the level. It was utterly frustrating, and it wasn't long before I gave up on it. I can't believe it. Not one, but two games are making me recommend Clock Simulator. God, I miss Clock Simulator. Hey, we've gotten a string of bad games, but there's gotta be at least some good games to play, right? I got it. Hello, my name is Random Bystander here, and I'll be auditioning with the monologue Rains Down Players Review by Random Bystander here. The Rains Down Players. 39 cents. This is a game where you play as two actors working as a theatrical duo, trying to grow their theater as the talk of the town. I saw this on the eShop, and as a thespian myself, I just had to see this one. And you know what? It's pretty good! The game is divided into two separate segments. The performances themselves, where you have to avoid objects being thrown at you, like tomatoes and bottles. I remember those days in theater. The other part of the game involves talking to the audience to get ideas for future plays. Certain audience members will inspire specific ideas. Once you get these ideas, you can combine them to create more plays, get a bigger crowd, get more ideas, so on and so forth. It's really fun to see what creative combinations can be turned into plays. I really found myself getting addicted trying to see what ideas could be grouped together. You can get yourself lost in it. Plus, you could tell a real lover of theater made this game, as there's tons of jokes involving the stage. I do have some critiques. The pixel art seems a bit too minimalist. I think it was trying to go for an earthbound look, but I'm not a big fan of how this one turned out. Also, some of the dialogue is a little bit much, like they are trying a little bit too hard to be witty, but that's only certain points. Overall, it's a fun little game that truly shows a love for the theatrical art form. My favorite so far. Well, after that nerve-wracking audition, I'd like to order some pizza. We can't just eat this pizza, oh no. We have to park it in the right way. Carefully. Carefully. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Pizza parking. A dollar forty-nine. Oh my god, a game over a dollar. I never thought I'd see the day. Here is a game where you play as a pizza delivery person, simply parking your car. You must avoid all the cones and park at the right position before the time runs out. If you hit the cone three times, game over. I didn't edit that. That's an actual sound effect in the game. A stock sound effect that I literally found on YouTube. They put in the game. And listen what happens when you win! Than the stock sound effects, there's nothing more to it than that. It feels less like a game and more like a driving simulator. The controls of the car work pretty well, and they do put a lot of detail in the models of the car, although they should have done something about those falling pizzas. However, the game does lack things like a background. You could have gotten something instead of this, which looks like Stephen King's The Mist. Also, if I'm being honest, the game kind of looks like it was made for a school project. Maybe it was, who knows. You know what? I'm done delivering pizzas. Time to go for a ride. I guess that pizza's not arriving in 30 minutes or less. Hello, 911. I'd like to report a missing pizza vehicle. What? Well, I mean, now that the vehicle's gone, I do kind of need a job. Why? 911 operator. 99 cents. You play as a 911 operator, shocker, where you listen to calls, pick up emergencies, and designate police vehicles, fire trucks, and ambulances to help those in need. You have to balance all the emergencies and make sure you get the appropriate vehicle to the right place at the right time. Not only that, you have to listen to 911 calls and pick the appropriate response for each call. The game really requires your full concentration, as one mistake could make you lose points. Oh yeah, 
people could die too. The voice acting for each call is performed well too, as some of the phone calls can range from hilarious to really emotional. There's no music during the game either, just silence and the sound of radios. It really adds to the atmosphere. This game makes me never want to work as a 911 operator, so I'm glad I could experience it here in this game. I have no idea if it's accurate or not, but I liked it, and I think it's a game that will really keep you on your toes. Pan Pan, a tiny big adventure, 25 cents. This game you play as an alien, I think, whose spaceship crash landed. You have to go through the entire area solving puzzles in order to get back flying and find the parts of your ship. The game is extremely atmospheric, unless the visuals do most of the talking. Also, the game is only told with grunts and sounds, no dialogue at all. It's actually quite nice, and gives a sort of a cozy feel to it. The puzzles can get a bit cryptic though, and you may need a guide to know what the heck you have to do. Still a fantastic game though, plus it's only a quarter. That was a good game. But consider this. Was it a considerate game? Didn't consider that, did you? Oh, I'm gonna butcher this one. Kukiyomi Considerate. $3.49. This is a game where you are thrown into a hundred different scenarios where you have to interact and be considerate. This includes doing things like moving a seat so you can make room for a couple, having objects move so it's convenient for others, or basically putting yourself before others. Or not. You could do the total opposite if you'd like. Be a jerk and do things that don't help others. It's up to you. The game is extremely Japanese, and the short segments of gameplay remind me more and more of a mellow version of WarioWare. The drawing style is also charming too, as all the drawn images are pleasing to the eye and fit the game very well. Maybe the most expensive game of the games we're looking at today, but I still think it's worth the money. A really pleasing game. And finally, Kaloro, 99 cents. You are separated from your sister, and you must find a way to reunite with her. As you move, you transform into a glowing square, and move around the level and bounce on edges in order to change directions, all while avoiding spikes and other hazards. The game is gorgeous, and the color of your character mixed with the background has a good contrast to it. For a game so inexpensive, there's something about it that just leaves an impact. The game also really challenges you too, as you have to get the timing just right in order to make it through the level. Overall, the game is another one of my favorites so far. Great graphics, simple concept, and I think you should give it a try. That's all the games for today. This time, there were a few bad games on this list, some that I would never play again. But at the same time, there's still a lot of good games that I was fortunate enough to try. Yes, there were a few games I didn't like this time around. Some were bad, some were weirdly controlled, one was unplayable. But even despite these sour apples, they did not contaminate the good ones in the batch as well. The games I enjoyed were interesting with their mechanics, fun, engaging, and a true treat that I wouldn't have tried otherwise if I weren't looking for these inexpensive games. Even the ones I didn't enjoy that much, they had something redeemable about them, or something that made them stick out in one way or another. So that's a positive as well. Except for pet care, that, that's trash for babies. Hopefully these videos bring attention to these games, as most of them do deserve some sort of recognition, or perhaps you can use your own eShop gift cards and try them out for yourself. If you liked any of the games mentioned today, even the ones that I didn't care for, by all means, give them a try. This eShop card is all good and done. Well, you know what that means, Luigi. It's time to go. Ah! Ah! No! <laughs> Bye, Luigi. See you next time we do this thing. Ah!